In this video, we're going to look at 2 by 2 lattice multiplication. And we've started to look at other examples here. We're just building this up to look at this grid. Let's try something simple. How about 22 times 11? How would we show this in lattice multiplication? So first of all, as a guiding principle here, we know we should get 242. And the lattice grid, we set it up. Hold on, so gonna, let's go put it down here a little bit. Okay, so when we set this up, we're going to split up each digit pair into a combination represented by these boxes right here. So really, this ends up becoming 22 times 11. And you can see how I set this up so that, in a way, each of these numbered pairs has a different intersection point or location to meet on the grid. And that allows us to look at every combination. The last thing you want to do is set the lattice up here by setting up these diagonal columns across each box like that. And now we've got everything we need. What do we do? Well, we start with the ones over here, just like we do in any multiplication problem. And one times two is two. So that goes right here. Okay. Nothing goes here yet because really what this diagonal is going to represent is the tens column. And one times two is just two ones. This over here, if you think about, I just quickly shade it in, this is the ones column right here, the ones diagonal. The next diagonal right here, this will be the tens diagonal. And then if you get if you guess, next comes the hundreds. And then, last, of course, after hundreds, thousands. So each of these diagonal columns represent a different place value. And that all makes sense, because if you look at what's happening here, we'll, just, we'll go through this in one moment, 1 times 2 would give you something in the 1's column, um, and then 1 times 20 will give you something in the 10's column over here, possibly the hundreds. That'll intersect and meet at this location right here. This one is really 10, and 10 times this 2 will give you something in the tens and possibly hundreds column. This 1 times this 2 represents what? Well, this is 10, and this is 20. So that represents a combination over here, which could lead to something in either the hundreds or possibly even thousands. So again, this 1 and this 2 meet in the 1s and 10s location. Right? 1s in this diagonal and 10s here. This 1 and this 20 over here meet in the 10s and possibly 100s location right here. This is a 10 times a 1. will give you something either in the 10s or 100s diagonals. And last, this 10 times this 10 will give you something in the in the hundreds or possibly thousands range right here. Now this is a mess and let me clear it. Again, in the lattice grid you're just setting up a basic structure for combining the products and organizing them by place value. So you set these diagonals up and that allows you to do that. Okay. So again, what we're looking at here is 22 times 11 and now I'll work through it quickly so you can see it. 22 times 11. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2, right? Or that's really 1 times 20. Gives you a 2 in this tens diagonal. 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, what happened there? Well, this 2 is in the tens column diagonal, excuse me, this tens diagonal. And this 0 is in the hundreds diagonal. That makes sense. 1 one ten times two ones gives you twenty, and that's what this two represents right here. One times two gives you two, but really that's one times, or excuse me, ten times twenty. What's ten times twenty? Well, that's two hundred. And notice this two is in this hundred diagonal right here. So now we're almost done. We just carry these down and add them up, right? Two and two is four. And 2 and zeros is just 2. And there's our answer. 2, 4, 2. This 2 is in the hundreds place. This 4 is in the tens place. 
and this 2 is in the 1's place. That's 242. Let's look at a tougher example. This time, let's make sure we have some carrying. Let's try something a little bit larger. How about 99 times 68? We set up the lattice grid. Okay, we're going to line up these four squares for each of our combination, and then set our diagonals in. Right there, and right there. Okay, now what do we do? Well, again, we're looking at 8 times 9, which gives us 72. The 7 goes in the 10's diagonal, and the 2 goes here in the 1's. Next, we do 8 times 9 again, which gives us now 72. You can think of it that way. But really, it's 8 times 90, which gives you 700. The 7's in the 100's diagonal. And this 2 is in the 10's because 8 times 90 gives you 720. All right, that's the location here. Now we move on to the 6. And this is really the 6 and 68. So this is 6 tens times 9 ones. Well, 6 times 9 is 54. That makes sense. Six time, 60 times 9 gives you 540. This 5 is in the hundreds diagonal. This 4 is in the tens diagonal. 540. Now we do 6 times 9 again, and we can think of that as 54. But remember, that's really 6D times 9D. And what does that give you? Well, it gives you 5,040. Right? This is the thousands column right here. Hundreds, tens, and ones. And now we have everything we need to find the answer. We add up each diagonal. This is 2. 7 plus 2 is 9, plus 4 is 13. 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 7 is 16. And 5 is just 5. Now, if you notice, whenever you have a two-digit number in a certain diagonal, that means that it, it exceeds the place value limits of that diagonal. This is supposed to represent right here how many hundreds we have, or tens we have, excuse me. And we're saying we have 13 tens. Well, isn't 13 tens, 13 times 10, isn't that equal to 130? Right? That's what we're saying, and we have 13 tens. So when that's the case, what we do is we carry over that 1 into the next place value right here, because that really represents 100. And likewise, we're going to do the same thing here. This 1 it represents 1 thousand, right? And this six represents six hundred. I knew that because you had sixteen one hundredths. So we're going to carry, whenever we have a two-digit number, we're going to carry the larger place value into the next group. Starting at the smallest place value like we just did, and then working your way up. Because now, right, we want to be careful here, this is one plus six, and this is one plus five. Because you're adding in here, in that case, that one, the extra hundred to the other hundreds that we have. And here you're adding that extra thousand to the thousands we already have. And now we're done, right? One plus five is six. That represents six thousand. One plus six is seven or seven hundred. And our answer is six thousand. You read, you read counterclockwise. You start here and then work your way across. This becomes... 6,732. All right. Hope that helps.